Hi, my name is Jamie. I got autism and As Asperger's syndrome, autism, and I've tried syndrome, and I snort 20 billion times a day. <laughs> like that one, right there. And, uh, this is a story that I have to come up with the whole, most of the story, because none of you know unless you followed me on Facebook or knew me in 2006, but I'll be right back. Alright, this skateboard right here, my, like, this is different, uh, back, and this is a different painting, but mostly, it's the same painting, but repainted, and these wheels are from California, I wrote this in California, and that's the board, but here's the story, I, I went to California with a trip with a friend, and we had so much fun, and I bought those green wheels from California, well, I didn't ride them when I was in California, but when I went home, I put them, uh, probably a couple of weeks later, I put them on my board. I rode my board to a thrift store, and that was, like, a big regret. And here's why. You should probably guess why, but... <clears throat> Sorry, brain freeze. But anyways, they sold the board. They said two ladies and a little girl, but... <clears throat> You hear, like, I found out it's one lady and a little girl. And they sold it for $2.50. I paid to custom build that board almost $500 or so to custom build that board. I built it from scratch. Well, not the board itself. Like, I, like it's an aluminum board. It's a Yosher aluminum skateboard from, like, the past. Anyways, I custom designed the entire thing. And... Because I put those California wheels on, it was the first time I've ever seen the ocean in my entire life. Like, the very first time in that that trip was magic. It was like, I felt like I was in a dream the whole trip, and I was so happy. I have I didn't feel a single bit of sorrow, and I suffered from depression. Well, not at the moment. I'm, I'm good with the depression right now, but... Like, I didn't feel a single bit of sorrow or sadness. I was like... Pure peace when I was in California. I was like, I've never been that happy before, like that I know of ever again. So it was like pure peace. I came from home from depression to California. The pure peace and pure joy is like, I felt like I could fly. Like I was just magical, you know, like, well, you might not know, but if you want to see something as much as I want to see the ocean, you would. You would have, like, felt magic like that, too. And anyways, the skateboard got sold for $2.50, which is over, it's almost a $500 skateboard. Thrift store felt bad, so they tried giving me, like, $150, and I said $100 or something. I'm like, that would only buy, like, the trucks and or, or, like, the deck or something. And they said there's no way a skateboard costs $500. So I said, well, I just have the money back. It's charity money. I don't want it. I said to them, like, I would feel bad, I would feel bad getting charity money anyways, and that one could bought the skateboard back anyways, it's memories, it's, it's custom built, the trucks were for my dad, the wheels were for California, I rode in California, you can't replace something like that. Well, um, hold on, I don't know how much longer, but... In this town, there's a festival called Corn and Apple Festival. And during the Corn and Apple Festival, the, the first voice in this... Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you what this video is. Listen to the first voice and never the second voice. That's what this video is. And you probably see it in the title, but I'm just telling you because, like, this is the video anyways. So the very first voice told me to go down this one street to this family, there was like a couple kids, um, like maybe a mom or some people, I don't remember who they were, I was like, like, very long time ago, and then the second voice popped along, and said, turn, don't go that way, go the other way, so I listened to the second voice, and that's what usually people do that comes out bad, the second voice is bad, and whether or not, whether any of you believe in God or not, he is real, he's proven himself to me, and I don't know how to prove him to you if you don't believe, but, like, he is the first voice, the devil is the second voice, the devil 
tries to make himself stronger, and that's why people listen. But always listen to your first voice. Like, never listen to the second voice. And near the, near the end, like, closer to the end of the video, you're going to find out why. And it's extremely tragic, and I might cry. I don't know, but it's not about the skateboard. But anyways, they told God told me, go the first way. Go see those people. The devil told me, go the second way. So I listened to the devil. I don't know why, I don't know why people listen to the second voice. Doesn't make any sense to me, but he seems to try and convince everybody that he's stronger. <sighs> but that happened after a couple times in a way. To go somewhere that my skateboard might be. Years later. Last year, I think it was. I think it was 2021 or 2020. I uh, was out milk. And I didn't have a single penny to my name, but the, the uh, co-op store right next to me pretty much always helps me when I don't have money to help me get something if I really need it. And uh, God was saying, go to the store and get milk. Go to co-op and get some milk. I'm like, I don't have money. And he says, just go. It'll, it'll be okay. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go. So I, got, I went to the store. And I uh, asked the lady if there was any way she could help me. She's the one that always helps me. And she's at the customer uh, customer service or 10 items or less desk. <clears throat> I'm talking so fast. I'm like hard, I'm like breathing so hard. I'm hyper. Hold on. I just got so much to say. So it's like these three video or four videos that are on, first on the channel are like all me hyped up. And I, I'm going to start eating my portraits or my... My red suit, my, until like, you'll see my bowl and me making the crackers in the first video and stuff like that, so it's pretty funny. Anyways, she says, she says, yes, go get milk and bread. I think there was bread. So, I go back and I come back with a jug of milk and she says, is there any way you can do a, a two liter one instead, uh, to, uh, you probably won't. So you, you you probably won't need one later, but it, it, it's all we can do at the moment. I'm not sure. So I literally here here's this shelf like COVID was around. So here's a shelf, and then here's more shelves that cover the cash register. In between, you go right there, and that's where the ten items or less is right here. Well, I started walking there, and I turned the corner just right here, like barely turned the corner. And this lady stopped me and said, "Hey." I'm like, hi. And she says, uh, are you the girl that lost a skateboard a uh, long time ago at the Thorpe or whatever she said? I'm like, I'm like, yeah. And she says, is there any way that you can give me your phone number? Because I know where it is. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean you know where it is? And, and I talked to her for a few minutes. And she said that she's the one, her and her daughter, that bought the skateboard. And the thrift store, and when she found out I belonged to someone, she tried looking for me. For all these freaking years, like 15 years, she's been looking for me to give me back my board. <laughs> Crazy, huh? So I give her my number, and like she says, uh, for me to meet her at this one place, so I end up there, and I said, it, that there was this uh, farmer's market or something going on, and then she, then I'm waiting, and she doesn't show up, and I'm like, and and then she she calls me crying and she says uh she says that she almost that she might have she did a big mistake and she can't find her house and that she did a really big mistake and sent it to Salvation Army by mistake and and we and I started crying and really hard because like that board means a lot to me and and she was crying and she kept saying sorry over and over and I felt so bad that that she was crying too and like. I wanted to not cry because I didn't want her to feel so bad, but I couldn't stop. So she said she was going to put an ad in the paper with a reward, and I'm like, really? I'm like, this lady's, like, super nice. I'm like, not only did she look for me for 15 years, I she's, like, going to put a reward in the newspaper and pay for it to be in the newspaper. I was, like, amazed. And, uh, so... She, I couldn't talk anymore because I was really upset, but I was really happy that she was going to do that, but I just pretty much gave up hope that the board would just ever show up. So later on, she either texts me or calls me, I don't remember what. 
And she says uh, that she was at, I think it was her sister's house. She was at her sister's, I'll just say her sister's. And uh, that she found a board in her closet. And she says uh, to meet her at co-op. And uh, at this certain day, at this certain time, I'm like, I, I, I was still not believing it because I'm like, that boy's been gone for so many years, 2006. That there's no way that this girl has it and that it's in any condition that I can actually enjoy it again, you know? Well, and like, I didn't think that she had it. I thought it was just like someone was playing tricks on me because like people were playing tricks on me for 15 years lying to my face and saying they saw it and now some kid was throwing it around destroying it forever and I pretty much had 15 years of depression and crying because to you a skateboard might be just a skateboard but think of your most prized possession that means everything to you and think of having that stolen for like 15 years and then all of a sudden someone's saying that it's they have it that they want to bring back and all that stuff and would you believe that? Seriously, like I, I, I can't go to sleep very easy. I, I'm terrified to go to sleep ever since that happened. Like I don't have images or anything. It's just like pure fear. Every time I close my eyes, I'm terrified. No images, nothing scary looking, no bad things that I can see or hear, but it's just this pure fear that like takes over my body. And I, I stay up for like ever since then. Until I can't stay up anymore. I can't stay up anymore. Like when. Before I go to bed. And even when I'm so tired. I'm, I'm seeing things. I still can't close my eyes. Until like an hour or two later. Like that actually totally destroyed my life. When that happened. And and my, my, my uh, mental ability. Just hasn't come back yet. And like the, I didn't tell the lady this, so I sure hope she doesn't see this video because I don't want her to know. So if you know her, don't tell her, please, because I just I really don't want her to know that it brought me that much pain because like she did so much to help me get back, like to get back and to give back, and like I just I don't want her to feel that way. She was so kind and and. Like, I just don't want her to feel that way. I just, I don't want to hurt anyone like that. So, if you know her, don't tell her, please. I'm not going to tell you her, her name. I don't even remember it anyways. I don't remember names very well. I still have her on my phone, but that's about it. <laughs> anyways, I, I, I did a, a, a live video on Facebook <clears throat> of me walking up to her. And, like... It was all so real, like, it didn't, it, it wasn't real, it was so real, like, it was like, I'm like, is this happening, and she opens up the car door, and takes it out, and the, pi the picture is very faded, because I painted it with, like, markers, and I'm looking, I'm like, I just stared at it, I'm like, I didn't know what to think, because I barely remembered what it looked like, with the green wheels, I didn't know what the green wheels looked like, the ones I got from California, because I never took a picture of them. And I, I looked at the board and I'm like, she handed it to me and like, I was showing the board on video and then uh, people on Facebook were saying, let me see her. And so I asked her and she said yes and I, I showed what she looked like on the video and and like, I, I was so speechless. I'm like, I kept saying thank you, I think if I remember, I don't really remember totally, but I was so speechless and I didn't. There was, like, no real, real emotions at that time because it was, like, like I said, it was surreal. It didn't make any sense. I'm, like, I, I it was holding it in my hand, but it didn't feel real. It was just, like, it just didn't feel real. And I'm, like, so when I got home, I put it, like, uh, at this table here, I put it, like, on a chair right there. <clears throat> and, uh, and I just stared at it for, like, half an hour. And I'm like, is this the board? I'm like, it looks like the board, but like, can this be faked? And like, my mind was going through a billion things all at once, and I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. And I just stared at it, and I, I looked at it, and I flipped it over, and I just kept looking at it. Then I'd spin the wheels, and and like, I just, it didn't do, it didn't process for hours. And then all of a sudden, like, I picked it up one night, I held it like this, and then I started crying so hard. I cried for like probably 20 minutes so hard that 
that like my eyes were burning. I had like no tears left pretty much and and like I was so so like shocked and I'm like like that was when I finally realized that that was my board that that had it back and <laughs> so I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Like I just, like I said, for any any guys that are watching, it's just a skateboard to you, or even some girls. But to someone that's autistic, that puts their heart into it, their drawings, their like everything that like my dad bought me those trucks. The wheels were from California. The board I rode in California. The painting was my own imaginary creature, and the grip tape was unique out of any grip tape possible. I'll show you what I mean. You probably saw it in the beginning of the video, but like this, like these lines here, I tried imitating them on another board and like this part here, this metal thing, and like this here, like the way I made the grip. I made it sort of look like an old school board, but like totally different on the front. And this is the painting, mostly the painting that I had on the board before, except it was slightly different colors. Before I had Sharpies and this one is not Sharpies. But this is the California wheels. This is the wheels I bought from California. These trucks are the trucks that my dad bought me. And this, I haven't even changed the bearings yet. These are original bearings from 2006. And some of them are pretty hilarious, like in this is. Okay, not that one. Hold on, wait. They're, they're mostly okay, but there's one really squeaky one. Like, I haven't changed the bearings, I haven't done anything except we, we look, we look at that one just fine. Like, these bearings are still good, but they're not the greatest. But to get that back was a miracle. And that was a miracle from God, and like I said, if you guys don't believe in Him, even if you don't believe Him, you believe in Him, if you want to know, ask him to show himself to you. And if you want to know at all. If you don't want to believe at all at this moment or whatever, you don't have to ask him. But if you ever feel like you want to know if he's real, even if you don't really want to believe him or don't believe that he's real, just ask him. Say, I want you to prove that you're real. And then he proved to me that he was real. And... A bunch of times in very amazing ways. I was at McDonald's and uh, I was talking, I really wanted to see the ocean again because like it was magical. So I was talking about airplanes and at the to the McDonald's employees worked. I think I was working there at the time, I don't remember, but not at that day. But I knew them very well, anyways. And I was talking to them, I'm just talking about airplanes and fares and like how much it'll be and like where I want to go and this other friend of mine he made he he made a custom wheelchair sort of thing it's like a motorized thing but he built it himself he he said Jamie look out the window I'm like I'm like huh I I stop and I turn around and he's like look out the window there's airplane I'm like so like and he's like no there's an airplane in the sky and it's the clouds or whatever he says I'm like what so I go to the window and there's like a perfect, almost totally perfect airplane flying through clouds that's made out of clouds. Like it's on my Facebook. So like if you want I could put my Facebook and you can see it. It's on the one of the oldest photos. But, but I took it with an iPhone 4 and I ran outside and I took the picture and like, there's, like, the plane has these, like, the wings. Okay, I can't do this on video. Okay, here's the wings. Like, this wing and this wing. Well, they're slightly slanted. Like, one wing's going one way and the other one's going the other way. They're slightly slanted like a bird. And then there's, like, the cockpit, I think it's called. And then there's a window. And the nose kind of has, like, a little thing on it, if I remember it. And then, like, the all the way down... The airplane, I, I don't remember if there was uh, windows, but the, you can see that there's a window of the uh, cockpit, I think it's called. Perfect window in the exact right spot. I'm telling you, it was a freaking airplane made of clouds. Like, and there was this big puffy cloud that the plane was going through. 
So you can see one wing at an angle and the other wing going through that way and the tail, which is a perfect looking wing tail, like plain tail. It's like, this could not be faked. Like, what I saw cannot be faked and cannot be some random thing because like, I was really talking about airplanes and there it was in the sky for me to take a picture of. I, if you guys don't believe, go on the, go on the Facebook thing if I share my Facebook. Go on there and like have like a professional diagnose that picture to see if it's real. Like if you really want to, if you really don't believe it. Have this guy diagnose a picture. I didn't do any editing, nothing. I just took it straight from the phone, put it on Facebook. That's it. So if you don't believe me, prove that picture is proof. And then there's another picture on there. That it was nighttime and God the uh, I was sitting on long exposure with my phone. And it had tripod and everything. You know what? You know, uh, King Kong, I think it is. Or, uh, not King Kong. The video game. Uh, the, the gorilla that throws things at Mario. Well, think of him with, with really big hands. And he he's like, he's like this. His, his feet are like down on the floor like that. And his really big hands are like here. In here, and he's just like that picture is a long exposure, and the clouds turned out to be a gorilla. And like, he looks exactly like a gorilla with his hands like zoomed in on the shot, and he's behind. Like, I mean, exactly like a gorilla. Like, if you look at it, you can see his mouth and the long, long mouth of his, and his chin, and his eyes, and his head, and, and his legs, his little short, stumpy legs, and like. This hands like hand actual hands and like that can't be fake either. If you don't if you don't believe it, like I said, have a professional look at it. Like seriously, you can. They're not fake yet. Don't want that one was straight from the phone onto Facebook as well. Like, no editing, nothing. There might be one that has a color change because I one of my photographing friends uh edited the photo to make the colors correct. Because he thought it was really beautiful, so he, he did it, and then he sent it to me. He did it for free because he just liked it. So there is an edited one with different colors, but the original is not edited at all. But that's all he did. He just, like, changed the colors to, like, more natural colors that I know, and maybe a little bit of noise reduction. So that one, we won't be able to tell if it's noise reduction, but my original one, that's lit earlier on, you'll be able to tell. Oh yeah. Remember I was going to tell you about the tragic thing that happened to me that happened because, well, it was going to happen indefinitely anyways, but the thing that I didn't get to do because I didn't listen to God's first message, and I knew at the time that, that I wanted to listen to God's first message, but I listened to Devil's second message. Here's a tragic story, and I might cry eventually, I might cry a lot, I might have to be pausing and stuff, I don't know. But, I was, uh, uh, my dad died on Corn Apple Weekend, or when it would be Corn Apple Weekend 2020, which was, uh, August, I think. Like, near, near the middle end of August. Well, about a month or two before that. I started hating my phone. I mean, like, seriously hating my phone. I didn't want anything to do with it. So I stopped, I either stopped bringing it with me or I would not look at it or just use it for text and call and that was it. Like, I hated it. I hated taking pictures. I hated video. I hate everything to do with the phone. I didn't know why. I just hated it so much. I just wanted to destroy the thing, just smash it on the ground. And it didn't make any sense. And so, I was with dad a bunch of times and I didn't want to like record video because I hated the phone so freaking much I wanted to destroy it. So I left the phone in the car like multiple times I was with dad at restaurants and, and everything and I just didn't want the phone and, and like a voice inside of me, God's voice, the first voice kept saying, record your dad, record, grab your phone right now and record him. But I listened to the second voice, I was the devil that said, you hate your phone, you don't want to use it, you don't want anything to do with it. We went to this place called Roland, and we went to this place called George's, and this amazing restaurant that you get like 20 pounds of food for like 
little money and and we were there and uh, I left my phone in the truck, his truck. That's uh, well, it was a Jeep truck, I think. And I didn't want it, but the God's voice kept saying, "Bring your phone, record your dad." And I just ignored it. I got, I felt sick to my stomach, and I wanted to record dad. But the second voice, devil, kept saying, "You don't want your phone. You hate this thing so much." So I wanted him not recording him, and then I wanted to show someone the picture. So I got my phone for that and showed them this picture. But I still didn't record dad. Well, I had like about two or three pictures of dad from the rolling trip. And he was at this big pumpkin and he was underneath. And that was like the only pictures I had of him from that trip. Because the devil kept telling me, don't use your phone. You hate your phone, blah, blah, blah. But the God kept saying, do use your phone, take more pictures. But dad always told me in the past he didn't really like photos. So I was listening to that message too. and. And then, like, later on, like, this part that really hurts. Like, the last time I was at a restaurant with Dad, and this part, like, really hurts. It was the last time. A place I called Copper Kale, and we went for lunch, and it was the last time I, I certainly got to be with him at a restaurant. We had, like, lunch together, and the De uh, devil kept telling me, don't touch your phone, and God told me to Recorded the video. He told me so bad that I almost, almost threw up. And I couldn't handle it. So I, I said I need to go. I'm tired. And then and then like we said our goodbyes. And then like I went home. And, and I went to bed. And I regret that so much. I regret not taking the phone out to record that. Because like the, I saw him one more time that I know of after that. And. It was like the day before he died, and I was so happy and everything, and I was full of joy. And I, like that night when I was walking home, there was like no, no sadness. I didn't feel that he was gonna die. Nothing. Not like I did the other day at the restaurant. And like the next day, he died sometime. Like he had uh, probably a heart attack. He was like laying on the ground. My brother said, and with it, and there was this plate like across the floor and and uh, he was laying on my brother's dog's pillow and like uh I, I was trying to contact him for days but I thought it was his work week so I thought he was just really busy and I, I he would get me water for water jug things for my water cooler and I had a water thing there and I couldn't figure out why he didn't take it out from outside take it in from outside and yeah, I found out he was dead and then, like, it was the end of the world, and I went to my auntie's and spent a week there with my brother and my auntie because I couldn't handle it, and she's like, we both just left left our town, like, like, shortly after we found out, we, like, left, like, the next day, literally the next day that we found out, after we found out, we left to my auntie's place, and we stayed there for an entire week, and and uh it was like we couldn't stay in this town like at all not even one more day we just like i was up all night he was up all night we couldn't sleep it was like horrible like like i don't drink alcohol ever but i wanted to like once i drank a wine cooler and that put me asleep so i tried doing that to go to sleep because i couldn't sleep and and i I drank like a bunch of alcohol, nothing happened, no, no sleeping, no, no drunkenness, nothing, like absolutely nothing happened, like, I know if I'm immune to like that kind of alcohol, I think it's vodka or something, I don't know, but I know if I'm immune to that one, because like, there was no dizziness, there was no drunkenness, I wasn't weird, nothing, it was just, it was completely normal, but it was just sad, and nothing, absolutely nothing happened, to me, at all, when I drank it, like, I mean nothing, there was no weird feeling, no emotion, wrongness, I wasn't weird, nothing strange happened, and I wanted to go to sleep so bad, and I was hoping that it would put me to sleep like wine did, they didn't have wine, but it didn't, it did absolutely nothing, I think it probably woke me up more, I don't even know, but, anyways, that's the story, the story that ended out good and the story that ended out bad so 
like I said, if you have these these feelings, the first feeling, and so strong that you want to throw up, don't ignore it, please, because don't listen to a second thing that makes you want to ignore it because it's just it's not worth it. Bad things just happen when you ignore the first one because that's God and the second one's the devil. When you listen to the second one, the devil, like, you're never, ever, ever going to, like, you're never going to forgive yourself for not listening to the first one, so. Sorry that this video became really sad, but this is a lesson that I learned and I don't want to do it again. So, see ya.